Bitcoin finds itself in a difficult position. In this video, we're going to be jumping down into the technical analysis of Bitcoin, trying to figure out what we think is likely to happen next and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, hit that like button. I really do appreciate that. If you're new, subscribe. And if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, check it out. Linked in the description below. It's completely free. It's the first place that we go to to notify you of everything that is going on in the crypto space. So why not check it out? Link in the description below. Let's let's jump right down into this video. We will be covering um, smart money concepts, Elliott Wave theory, just trying to figure out you know what the structure of the market is looking like and what I think the next move is. So uh, as you can kind of see, the market is in a very difficult position. But let's just kind of recap back just a moment uh, over to where we were trading sideways. We're in a stuck in a ranging market where the market couldn't decide uh, where to go. We'll either go long, to go short and all that kind of stuff, right? And we saw the bulls and the bears really fighting it out. So for example here, you can see that we changed from a bearish state of play into a bullish state of play. We then changed from that bullish state into that bearish state here and then back up into a bullish state here. Then, of course, most recently, we changed back into a bearish state of play. So it was kind of a battle between the bulls and the bears for quite some time. The difference now, though, is that our change of character into a bull uh, bearish state of play has been confirmed with our break of structure, confirming that we are, in fact, in a bearish structure now. OK, so this allows us now to be uh, understanding that things are not necessarily uh, in a positive place. Now, we can come down a little bit deeper here, right? So this is smart money concepts. Smart money concepts tracks the idea of large institutional investors, big funds coming in and out of the space, right? So for example, we can see that large institutional investors were coming out of the space. They left behind a, what they call fair value gaps. And uh, this one was left behind and got filled very, very quickly. It got filled just over here, for example, right? We can see the same thing on the way down over this side. I'll pull that in here. Okay, and we come across. You can see this one hasn't technically filled 100% yet. And so it's still potential move to the upside uh, before we continue to the downside, right? So we know that there's still room here. Really, this one gets filled out at 26,266. But let me talk about what a fair value gap is for anyone who doesn't know. And if you're new to the channel, a fair value gap is an imbalance in the order book. Okay, and so let me see if I can find um, an order book for you guys to take a look at, right? So I'm just going to go over to BitGap which is my go-to exchange at the moment. I use uh, BitGet pretty much for all my spot and leverage trading. So I'm just going to go over to spot trading. I'm just going to go to Bitcoin and, and I'll show you what these imbalances are like, right? So over here on the right-hand side, we have an order book, right? We can see all the red areas. These are all the people who are selling and the green areas. These are all the ones that are buying, right? And you can see the prices that they're buying. You can see the volume of Bitcoin that they're buying. You can see the volume of Bitcoin that's being sold as well, right? And so what you have is usually equilibrium or a balance between these two things and they call that liquidity right where there's equal amounts of selling and equal amounts of buying uh, they call those things liquidity and so when they, the market is liquid and you're able to sell or buy without moving the price, uh, the transactions are incredibly easy, right? So if you create that imbalance in the order books, you tend to find that you create these fair value gaps, right? Where there was so much selling pressure here that price couldn't fill it. It was illiquid. So price has to come down to get filled okay so price has to drop down lower until it meets adequate amounts of buying pressure so someone with a large amount of bitcoin trying to sell up here at 26,266 couldn't fill their order until 25,808 meaning that they couldn't dump their bitcoin on the market quick enough there wasn't enough buying pressure at the higher level that the price had to go down and find the buyers okay so just to kind of keep everyone on on their toes here a little bit you know when we take a look at you know imbalancing in the order book it means that generally speaking if someone was trying to sell their bitcoin at a higher price but actually they sold it slightly lower because that's where the buyers were they're not going to continue selling at lower prices they're going to stop their selling and they're going to wait for price to push back up at price and the markets love to fill gaps whether they are CME gaps or fair value gaps. Liquidity likes to return to where it wasn't before. So when we see fair value gaps in the market, there's a high probability that price is going to gravitate towards them. Okay, and it's going to fill those gaps back out with li liquidity. And then of course, the people who are selling can go ahead and do the same thing again and just dump on the market at that price and continue rinse and repeat, grab the liquidity. Okay, so it's important that we understand uh, why and how fair value gaps are created because it helps us track where the big money is coming in or coming out of the market. Very important that we do that.
And you know, for anyone who doesn't know, um, we are affiliated with BitGet. There's an affiliate link in the description below. So if you are looking for a new exchange based on everything that's going on uh, with Binance, Coinbase, the SEC and all that kind of stuff, why not check out BitGet? Like I said, it's my go-to platform at the moment. I use it for absolutely everything. Uh, they don't have all the tokens and all the pairs out there that I would like. So sometimes I'm having to jump over to Mexi, for example. Um, but for the most part, BitGet is my go-to platform. I use it for all my spots. As you can see here, you can do spot on Bitcoin USDT, for example, uh, all the way through to leverage trading, um, multiple different kind of uh, contract pairs as well. So it's a fantastic platform. They do some fantastic offers as well. So you can sign up and depending on how much you deposit, you can grab up to over $8,000 dollars in bonuses and many different things going on there we also use anyone who does sign up with our affiliate link in the description below uh, we use that link to basically automatically add you into a weekly trading competition down in our discord server as well uh, basically the person who has the best roi uh, percentage pnl percentage in a one week period monday to sunday uh, will essentially win and so anyone who does sign up with that link is automatically added into this competition every single week and you might just win by having a really good success trading week as you can see here uh, the winner for last week uh, I believe was 38% uh, so looking really really good so if you are looking for a new exchange I would kind of say check out BitGet I'm not saying you have to use it but I personally really like everything that they have to offer uh, link affiliate link is in the description below so why not go ahead and check it out let's jump back down into the technical analysis though um, on um, Bitcoin right let's go ahead and jump into this one uh, so what's going on well we've got the fair value gaps they're not being quite you know filled out yet uh, I still think we got a little bit more of a move to the upside and I think we actually see that within some other technicals as well so let's go ahead and remove those for a second now one of the things I talk about reasonably often are the uh, issues that I see when I see higher highs and higher lows right higher highs higher lows have a tendency to want to break down you can go back through the history and take take a look at this if you don't believe me pick any any coin any token you want uh, and just look for for higher highs higher lows and you'll see uh, essentially what i see uh, which is a, a breakdown in the market right so for example in here higher highs and higher lows and then we broke down from it okay uh, for the most part you might think ah, oh, it's just coincidental right but when you start drawing these multiple times over uh, you start to realize actually it probably isn't a coincidence uh, anyway if i just go ahead and move these over to here and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to extend that down a little bit and push this up a little bit. I think we're in uh, exactly the same situation right now. I think we're going to be pushing up higher, okay? But I think essentially we are actually going to be breaking down. So what this means, I and this is some of the things that the, the people in the comments love this. Uh, can go up, can go down. No, I'm saying it's going to go up before it goes down. It's a, a very specific uh, thing that has to happen here, in my opinion. Right. The market in itself is um, shifting momentum. OK, we can see that from our stochastic RSI here. So we know that there is momentum shifting, at least on this one hour chart, indicating that a move to the upside is probable. I'm not saying it's a guarantee, but it's probable, meaning that I would expect to move to the upside before we broke on down a break to the downside is what I believe to be inevitable okay so I think that we have to move down but at the same time I think it's probable that we have to move up before we have the inevitable move to the downside this is because markets do not move in straight lines it's, it's impo impo an impossibility to just continuously sell if there are not adequate buyers you can't have an illiquid market and expect um, price and technical analysis to kind of work and for the most part Bitcoin being the, the leader of the crypto market is highly liquid it's got a lot of liquidity from time to time there are pockets of illiquid areas but for the most part it is a highly liquid market and as such we would expect the market to behave in a very specific way which essentially is that nothing will move in straight lines you'll get rapid movements in one direction briefly uh, whether that is because of fundamental occurrences in the real world or just because you know we've hit certain levels of resistance and whatnot or potentially even support. But ultimately what we're seeing here is a potential need to move up, probably more towards the equilibrium. You can see here on this smart money concepts, that equilibrium is an area where we are holding uh, as resistance quite a bit. Um, and we are still below the 200 EMA. But we can, of course, note that there is this internal sell order block right up here, which does coincide with our 200 EMA. So I think that might be the area that we want to be thinking and targeting 
overall. Uh, so that would be approximately $26,300. Now, if I apply some Elliott Wave Theory into here, it would might, might help us understand you know, what the, the likelihood of things uh, to occur are. So we know that we have a kind of idea here of a three wave structured move uh, coming to the downside over here. And we also know that we have, let me bring this up here, a three wave structured move to here now. Okay, so zigzag there, bounced up, zigzag down here. Okay, so at the moment, this is actually quite interesting because we kind of have a double bottom, which would be a bullish tell under probably better circumstances it would be. Um, so but for the most part, it might not be looking so well. I would say that possibly there's some kind of inverted cup and handle, but I think we've probably retraced a bit too far for that, and it's not a perfect analogy either. Ultimately though, my concern here might be that we end up with a triple zigzag potential and the reason for that is that if I bring in this we can already see that we have kind of gone up here for an A wave down here for a B and up here for a C we then come down in a three wave move one two and three here or A B and C and the next move does look like we've gone here here to here probably equilibrium and you know we're not yet seeing any move out of this area now if I were to kind of just take a look at this on a slightly zoomed out view um, I would be looking at probably saying that is this an A is this a B and are we going to come up here into this kind of range and test out that C wave okay possible and if it is the case then we can be a little bit more descriptive over it because with Elliott Wave Theory, there are very specific rules. And you can see how I instinctively just put that on the one-to-one -one ratio there. Um, so our expectations on this next move to the upside, uh, or typically would be between 1 and 1.236 at $26,460 to $26,667, right? Uh, that would be that range. But we know that this parallel channel, if it were to hold, would probably just be looking at peeking into that range. But don't be surprised if that 200 EMA and this sell order block range come together to kind of keep price suppressed. We'll have to keep an eye on that. But it gives you an idea that if we do a structure like this and we have this kind of three wave pattern to the upside here, uh, the next move could be a pretty big ABC structure. And this would then look more like on a slightly macro scale, a WXY X and then Z coming down deeper. Alternatively, um, we could also look at this as maybe um, a much, much, much bigger move overall. But for now, looking at the patterns, I would say uh, probably just going to be looking at testing around that $23,000 range. Now, this isn't an unusual because everything that we've been tracking on our Elliott Wave Theory side of things, let me just zoom out, is essentially tracking the idea of all of these five wave nested positioning. This means that a move down towards 23,900 would actually trigger a 1.618 uh, target range and making us go very, very impulsive. But we are not really at those levels yet. What, what I am noticing here is a lot of nested um, five wave structures that are giving me reason for concern. You don't see these um, nesting down like this often at all, right? So this is a market that could be building up into a really big, uh, big violent move in a direction. Now, it's not yet clear whether or not this is going to be an indication that we are going down in an impulsive pattern to less than $20,000. It is at the moment still technically possible that this is a corrective pattern uh, that is just zigzag, uh, probably triple uh, in nature. Uh, and it could also have uh, double and triple zigzag patterns nested within uh, the larger structures as well. So uh, what I'm saying, guys, is at the moment it's, it's too early to know but it is giving us a little bit of concern to think that maybe Bitcoin is gearing up for a big move. Not confirmed, not yet, but potentially that is on the horizon. So we want to be mindful, specifically if we're doing some dollar cost average buys, that the market might not be going in our favor on a slightly medium to longer term basis. But, you know, if we are corrective, then the next move to the upside will be pretty good in itself. And we do know that we have CME gaps at around thirty-four dollars to $35,000. So that could be the next big swing in the market should 
uh, should this actually just be a corrective pattern that gets a break to the upside? And what, really, that's what we're waiting for. We're either waiting to get confirmation that we're hitting these impulsive trigger points to the downside, or alternatively, we're looking for that break of the structure by hitting some slightly higher range it ranges. And uh, you know, anything really kind of around that 28 to 30k is going to be pretty um, pretty good for Bitcoin, I think, to allow it to kind of say, yeah, we probably haven't got this uh, impulsive structure in play. So at the moment. It's kind of all to play for, right? The bulls can, if they wanted to, rally behind it and really try to push that price forward, further forward. And on the flip of that, you know, the bears are probably going to be really aggressive in trying to take uh, take take stock of the situation and, and basically really try to push and suppress the Bitcoin price. Um, ultimately, though, uh, given everything that uh, the SEC are doing, um, essentially, I do think it is uh, very typical of the US at this point in time. Uh, they are being rather um, ignorant to what digital assets are, in my opinion. But, you know, corruption through and through, and I do hope that the SEC uh, fall on their sword at some point. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. How do you think Bitcoin is going to perform for the rest of this year? Do you think we are going to find ourselves in a very bearish situation? Or do you think that actually we're about to have a bit of a run to the upside? It was a big week this week, uh, everything from the Hinman emails through to the FMOC interest rate hikes and all this kind of good stuff let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below if you found it useful smash the like button if you're new subscribe and uh, guys why not check out bitget affiliate link in the description below until the next one though guys have a fantastic day we are not financial advisors none of what we have communicated early or in writing here should be considered as financial advice it is not do your own research before investing in any digital asset or affiliate offers and understand that investing in any crypto is risky if you do you need to be prepared to risk your entire investment this video is an information against the investors only all other videos are strictly personal opinions please make sure you do your own research and never take our opinions for financial advice there are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit for people our videos are not financial advice